Um, what I'm what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, it's six o'clock. We're going to be audio recorded by FCAT. That's audio recording. Okay, so we have a record of the meeting. And what I want to do first is to read the agenda for anyone who is on the call so they know what we're talking about throughout the meeting. Uh, the first item is going to be the minutes of the last meeting. Then we have three warrants to approve. Then we'll talk about meetings attended by select board members. Uh, public comments, if there are any. Uh, under old business, we have to approve the hazard mitigation plan. We have to vote uh, for borrowing terms for the highway maintenance building and our treasurer will have a recommendation on that. Uh, we have a letter supporting uh, allowing alcohol establishments to sell beer and wine to go with a food order. Um, update on that. Uh, we'll talk about that when it comes up. Uh, we have a revised sick pay policy to talk about. Uh, COVID-19 issues, uh, of course, uh, town response. Questions of alternative housing for first responders exposed to the virus, cultural council grantees, request to pay for preparation if canceled uh, in advance postponed, any related issues or policies. Uh, we're gonna talk about electricity aggregation because our plan has been approved. Uh, there's going to be a compliance filing and other issues and updates, and I'm sure Bob will have a lot to say on that. Uh, new business, uh, we have to consider the new Mohawk Trails Woodlands Partnership grant proposal. Uh, Tom, do we have any items not anticipated 48 hours in advance? Nope. Okay. Uh, and Tom has his update. And uh, he's going to talk about quotes for the forest stewardship project uh, that we will vote on next week. Um, okay, that's all we have for the agenda. So with that, I will I will start the meeting. And as I said, we're being video recorded by uh, FCAT. We're going to take um, roll call votes when we do vote. Uh, and a quorum is present. Both Philip and I are here physically, and Bob is uh, cloistered in uh, the Cape, out of the Cape, and he's in calling in remotely. All right, first item on the agenda. Philip, have you uh, read the uh, minutes of the March 23rd meeting? Yes, all things considered, they were uh, really well done. Well, I, I think that. Uh, that uh, Thomas did these minutes because we didn't have um, um, Lisa here. Oh, she, she was on the call. She did. Uh, oh, she was. Oh. She did okay. That was my way of saying. Well, well thank, thank you. I approve. And thank you, Lisa. So yeah, I move to approve the minutes. Okay, I'll second that motion. Robert. I vote aye. Okay, so we have Philip voted aye with the motion. I vote aye. I'll second, I vote aye, and Robert, you voted aye. aye, so we have unanimous. So the minutes for the March 23rd meeting are approved. Uh, we have three warrants. We have a vendor warrant for $25,792, a payroll warrant for $121,997, and a payroll deduction warrant for $30,938. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Yes, you do. Uh, Philip uh, seconded. Uh, I'll call for a vote. Uh, Philip? Yeah. Robert? Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. They're passed. Meetings attended by select board members. Philip? Yeah, last, thing. last Tuesday, there was a series of school committee meetings um, held. Uh, virtually just to enable the continued operations of the schools um, and in which we, we approved uh, uh, memorandums of agreements with all of our unions to carry on uh, relationship in these strange altered times. So that was that was very good. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Last week I had... So John, I had a, wait, John, so I actually had a meeting 
John, believe it or not. So, so uh, okay. I imagine I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Robert. Sorry. Right. I'm sitting in between you and Philip now. So, so anyway, um, uh, uh, we had a conservation commission meeting online, and it was basically to postpone a couple of the site issues that we've been working on uh, for a couple weeks, and then. Um, we will be meeting again. So our meetings are now online as much as possible, but some of them are actually going to have to not be online and see how that goes. So, great. So, Conservation Thank Commission, you. that's it. Great. Thank you, Bob. Um, I had a brief meeting with our police chief um, last Tuesday. Uh, I just wanted to talk to him about um, security issues in town. Um, and what we might uh, might plan for the future if necessary. I uh, won't go into detail on that, but uh, that was one meeting I had. I also had a um, a local government advisory commission meeting. Tom, you were on that call, right? Uh, I we was not on that call. Oh, you were on that call. Okay, we had a Zoom we had a Zoom conference. Um, oh. Um, last Tuesday. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, you you were. Yeah, I was. Yeah, you were on that call. I wasn't thinking of the the well, yeah, yeah, Actually, yeah. John, I was on that call too. That that was. That's right. That's right. You were on that call too. I was. Yeah, and actually, actually, that worked out really well. Uh, I was quite surprised. We had like 255 participants on the call, and uh, everything everything went really well. I thought. Um, and you know, obviously, they talked a lot about the uh, the situation with the uh, the virus and uh, revenues of the state because what's going on with you know tax revenues and things like that. So uh, yeah, it was a very good call, and they're going to be held every Tuesday from one to two o'clock for municipal officials um, to basically hear what's going on at the state level and to make comments and questions. Philip, did you get an email on that? Um, on that call? I think I did. Okay. All right. Okay. If you, if you, don't, if you didn't, let me know. I'll, I'll copy you on my email so you, you have it. Uh, but I'm sure, you, I'm sure you probably got I did. Yeah. Okay. And that is the, the MMA call with NEMA and the Department of Public Health. And the Lieutenant Governor was on that call, which is, which is why it seemed like an LGAC meeting, but it was bad. an invite about a call this coming Tuesday. I just know they were every Tuesday. Uh, could you forward me something? I will. I will. Or for yeah. John? That would be great. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a very good call. Uh, and it's going to be every Tuesday to keep everybody updated on what's going on. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is to approve the hazard mitigation plan. Are you on the call? Kimberly is not on the call. Kimberly's not on the call yet. Um, uh, why, don't, why don't we table that until we were expecting Kimberly, correct? Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll table that until uh, we get uh, Kimberly on the call. Yeah. I, I think we. Um, Can I ask? Is there a fully is there a fully printed out copy or hard bound copy of the entire thing? That's been made, um, or is it all? Because it's, it's a big hunk of digital file. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Uh, hey, 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 Janet. Hi, I entered the conference. Uh, it's Roy again. Hi, Roy. Hey, Roy. Hi, hi, hi. Has entered the conference. It, it came up to 270 pages, and my computer it just gets pretty unmanageable to uh, make any.
want to say thank you to um, committee members and the town staff that participated in uh, putting the plan together. Um, FEMA will issue a formal approval letter once they receive the certificate of adoption that the board will be voting on this evening. And um, once the formal approval letter is received from FEMA, the COG will issue a couple of um, bound paper copies of the report as well as digital copies of the report. And the town will be eligible for pre and post disaster mitigation grant funds for a period of five years. Great, and, and this, is, this is basically the plan that allows us to, uh, to basically tap into those grant funds, correct? Correct. Yep, okay. And I will note that we do have a grant application in now that needs this plan to be adopted in order for us to, in order for that grant proposal to move forward in the FEMA process. And, that, and that's the grant for Delabar Avenue. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I just want to. I just want to mention the committee members who worked so hard on this. Uh, we have um, Robert Baker, our fire chief. Uh, George Murphy, our emergency management director. Joe Stragowski from the planning board. Robert Armstrong from the board of selectmen. Uh, Tom Hutchison, our town administrator. Ron Sweet, the har high our highway foreman, and uh, uh, right superintendent, and our um, uh, police chief Ken we met. Uh, they they did a, a a very very good job on this plan, and uh, it's something that we need uh, for grant purposes moving forward. Um, Phil, do you have comments on this?
Have a good evening. Thank you. You too. Stay safe. Thank you. Yep. Bye. Bye. Right, next item is can I just yeah. the the cultural council representative that's on the telephone. Her item is not on the agenda. I don't, um, I don't know whether. I mean. Yeah, I think it's right down under it, COVID under COVID issues. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, good. All right. Good, good, good. Sorry. All set. Okay. All right. Next item is to vote uh, borrowing terms for the highway maintenance building. Jan, are you on? Jan is not on yet. All right. Let's let's send you the letter. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think unless there are any questions about it. Questions. She wanted, um, she wanted the select board to be aware, and um, uh, but I'm sorry. You, she told you were. Well, I do have a question about this, and has has Furcock Joe weighed in on this? No. Uh, oh, oh, you mean um, Joe? Joe no, Mark Harris. Mark Harris. Thank you, thank you, thank right. you. So that guy, that guy is the guy that I trust in all things municipal finance, just from having dealt with him so uh, uh, intensely with the the, the, the track issue and, and all that, and and anything like this. Um, I would like to run past him to see whether he agrees and um, uh, or whether he has any words of wisdom. He always has words of wisdom on all things of this nature. Um, so Joe, Joe is, is extremely knowledgeable in these things, as is our treasurer. I agree. Okay. I, I'd like to think uh, I have consulted with him already. But do we, do we, we don't need to do this tonight. Um, no, we, we, we don't, but um, we consult uh, right. Uh, right. He's not on call to Conway for financial advice. Right. So, um, but he'll take a quick look see for a tea. He will. Uh, can can we can we call the Furcog and see if Joe will just you know look look at this and give us his his opinion? Um, sure. Okay. All right. And, uh, and I have no problem you know authorizing a couple hundred dollars for him to do that either. Like we can. <laughs> come up with that somehow maybe but yeah yeah whatever, whatever um all right and we'll just hold this off until next week all right and we'll get an opinion from joe i i, I totally trust jan's opinion but um in, in deference to philip we'll we'll hold off until next week to get his recommendation on jan's opinion all right allowing retail alcohol establishments to sell beer and wine to go with a food order. All right, uh, my information is that um, they're going, they were supposed to vote, the Senate was supposed to vote today on this bill that's um, House Bill 4580 that would allow local establishments to sell food and along with food for takeout, they could sell alcohol. Obviously, the only place in town that we have that sells alcohol is on the way in. Uh, this would help bar tremendously, and I certainly hope they came back into session this afternoon and passed this bill. Um, I think. Uh, Can we approve um, we will these letters? What's that, Robert? Can we, approve, can we approve both letters? One, encouraging them to do it, and the second, thanking them for doing it. Well, we only have one letter tonight, um, but certainly we can next week we could put put together another letter that will uh, uh, thank them for doing it. Let's hope so. Yeah. Okay. All right. And I, we do have, a, I'd like to pass a message along from the uh, innkeeper herself asking that as soon as there's word that the bill passes, could someone please call her and let her know? Um, I spoke to her. Okay, yes. Yes, I, I she is. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, Natalie Blay has told me that as soon as it passes, she's going to get in touch with me. And, all right, it's going to be done. All right, so um, I'll make a motion that we sign this letter in support of. Um, Allowing retail alcohol establishments to sell beer and wine to go with a food order. Do I have a second? Yes, of course. Bill up second did. Robert. Good. Aye. Aye. Okay. Robert, you're an I. Philip, you're an I. I'm an I. Okay. And I'll get a revise. What we'll what we'll do is we'll go back to the office after this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next item is the revised. Sick pay policy, Thomas. Uh, what do we got? Uh, this is just uh, putting into print of what you 
the direction you gave last time. Um, so, uh, Michelle Sanger. Yeah. Hello, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Hi Michelle. Oh, How's so everyone? This, so this is um, uh, adding the uh, the maximum of six weeks, which is I think the maximum that people get sick for. That's what I've heard for. That's what I've heard. And then um, having negative sick time being earned back before new sick time is approved. Right. Sure. It will make it easier on everybody. Right. Right. So I would just ask again that you have the language in there that it's employees with a diagnosis, with a positive diagnosis of the COVID-19. Oh, it's kind of said it in the title, but I don't, that gets a little sticky if you depend on the title to be meaningful.
so that if and when the time comes that it's needed, and I got Jenna's email saying that right now it, it, it's premature, but if and when that, we, I, I, I just like those regulations passed to Gemma and to the, to the fire chief, and, and for you to have a working knowledge of it, just so that we can get reimbursed uh, in accordance with like our rights under the law, and that we don't mess it up for lack of paperwork or lack of requesting the proper permission from the proper entity or whatever. So, um, but th there was definitely a procedure that has to be followed. That's when I looked at it, it was like, that's not something that you can just do what you want and then send them a bill. You have to, right. you have to follow those pieces too. So that was one part um, that, that I noticed. And then um, the other part, which kind of goes into what the cultural council uh, might get be talking a little bit about is just, um, we're uh, starting to hear from a lot of people that are hurt, just not just the people that lost one third of their life savings in the stock market, um, but the, the, all the people that are having trouble just right away with a mortgage payment and with rent payment and with the fact that your $1,500 check from the Fed doesn't come for three or four more weeks and all these bills are due and there's people just hurting. And um, we're getting told already that there's uh, the tax, what, what, whenever the tax bill due date is, was it July 1st? Um, May 1st. May 1st. Um, that, uh, you know, are, are we making any kinds of plans to either delay enforcement or, you know, are we going to do something in that regard to, well, we'll, we'll your own people, but which goes into the whole general thing of are we planning for the worst? And, you know, I mean, to, to me, the, the role of government is to plan for the worst and hope for the best. And that means planning for a collapse in town revenue and the ability of, of people to support the government. And that means going through our budget and just like a ship that's sinking in the ocean, you throw everything that's not nailed down, it's not absolutely essential overboard. And you construct sort of like a secret budget alternative, worst case scenario kind of thing. And these are the things that I think we should be planning about um, because uh, it, the, the, the one thing that you do know is that people in our town cannot get tested for this right now. You, 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 if anybody, if you, if you know anybody that's tried, like I do, you, you have to first have all of the symptoms, including the fever, etc. Then you have to get tested for the flu, and that has to be negative, and then they'll give you a coronavirus test. And the reason we only have 40-something people that test positive in our county is because they're not testing anybody. Um, and 49, 49 in Franklin County. 49, and I don't know if that includes the 17 new ones from the Buckley homes, but I'm told that's one kind of resident that's amongst that number. Um, the, the, um, as of today, 12.30 today, uh, Franklin County has 49 confirmed cases. That's from the Department of Public Health. But, and they have a huge number that they don't allocate to counties as well. Um, and, and I'm told that because of the nature of it, when they do test in this area, people are told to go down to Springfield for the testing. Um, and that uh, positive results aren't necessarily getting credited properly, They're being lumped into an uh, unknown category when, it's, when they're getting tested out of county. So uh, what, uh, this is what I've been saying from day one, that we don't have any idea how many people in this town have this. Um, and we don't have any idea what the level of preparation or the level of uh, effect in this town is gonna to be. Whatever you see now is what people have contracted two weeks ago. And um, we, we do know our governor says that the feds haven't met Massachusetts's request for emergency equipment. Um, and, you know, we, do, we do know our local nurses are being asked to make masks at home already. And, um, I would just like to, in general, to see more, just, uh, more, more of what I just said, and a, an awareness that uh, of what's possible, and a beginning, a uh, 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 wrapping our arms around it in, to some extent. Um, I, as as we as we move forward, all these things will will be uh, will be looked at carefully. Uh, right now, again, we have no confirmed cases in Conway. Uh, 49 cases in Franklin County out of 71,000 residents. So we're we're lucky because we're rural. We're able to keep distance from one another uh, out here in a rural environment. And luckily, we're, we haven't 
have been affected like some of the places around uh, Boston have been affected. You know, uh, Boston is uh, seeing cases, many, many cases every day. And unfortunately, you know, that, that's going to be the case for a while. We don't. We're not seeing a lot of cases here. And hopefully it stays that way. Um, hopefully. Yeah. John, John, I, so I really like something that Tom just said, or at least if I understood what he was just said, when he talked about, you know, trying not to set a tone. And and I think as a select board, we should be setting a tone. It, you know, you know, I mean, I don't, we have no power to, we have no authority to force people to modify their behavior around this virus. But I think our tone should be that people in Conway should be taking this virus very seriously. And that, 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 that the proposals that are all, that are in the state um, recommendations ought to be the minimum that people should be doing, not trying to do what the recommendations are. You know, that, that you should go outside of your house as rarely as possible. And that if you go to the store, you should be treating that as a risky endeavor, not as something that you just have to go do and, and what a pain. And I, 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 for the sake of our health, I mean, I have a daughter who is a nurse in Boston who works on coronavirus patients. And she says all of the nurses and all of the doctors are pretty ticked off that so many people in Massachusetts, who they see in their hospital, have not taken this seriously. And it, it, it has to, you know, I really, I, I would love it if our board adopted a tone that said, please, take it seriously. And I don't okay. know if that's the right way, but, uh, you, you know, the, the, I hear my friends who I respect talking about going out much more casually than I believe they should. If you live in a house with, people live in a house with a bunch of family members, and when you live in that house with your family members, all of the activities of all of those family members really should be considered like they were done by all of them. If you live in a house with your kid, and your kid casually goes out and plays pickup basketball with a bunch of guys on the street, that's not, that's not maintaining six feet. That's not respecting what the state is asking us to do. Right. Would, would you like to work with Tom on some sort of a statement uh, that we would, we would uh, review and present next week? Sure. Yeah, okay. and to me, you know, th this isn't maybe going as far as Bill is talking about, but it, 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 it is paying the respect to all of our healthcare workers that I think they really deserve putting their life on the line by going into work and not having masks and not having protective equipment. Uh, and mm -hmm. the, the least we all should be doing is, is really, you know, virtually quarantine yourself as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly, we certainly want the tone to be encouraging and hopeful, but we don't want it to create undue anxiety. Okay? There's no anxiety that's undue when it comes to this stuff. That's just like, you know, this, this is the greatest global threat since World War II. It's the first time the entire planet has a common enemy since Adolf Hitler. And um, this, the entire planet is shut down. There's no school anywhere. There's, there's, no, no, there's no economic activity anywhere. The entire planet. Um, and when you heard our president go from just three weeks ago saying that we're gonna be at zero very soon to yesterday saying if, if it's less than $200,000, 200,000 live loss, then he's done a great job. That, that, like, if you think that 200, that, if that's a best case scenario and you think our town is going to be untouched by numbers like that, you're dreaming. And that we should be, we should, people should be scared, people should be anxiety, and they should be getting masks, it should be, um, you know, they should have gloves, and uh, a absolutely, you know, call for delivered groceries, get it, curbside delivery, there's all kinds of places now that are doing that. Um, try to uh, minimize your contact with your fellow human beings. The fact that in this
Davis County, this weekend there's going to be funerals that families are not going to be allowed to go to. Is just unbelievable to me. Um, well, okay, that's part of the part of, and you know, the safety of, of the situation. Can I let it last? From from the audience. Yeah, go ahead, Roy. Yeah, go ahead, Roy. Why in the world are you still meeting physically? I'm scratching my head on this one because I'm one. Of, I'm one of those people. The exceptions, maybe, to the rule that. Uh, to the people that Bob was talking about, I take this very seriously. And honestly, Thank you. I am, you know, look, if I'm, I'm in, I'm, I am in, I work with our infrastructure. If there's a server that blows up or something goes up and swamp, I gotta go into those buildings. And the fact that you guys are there now, see, they, I, see I think that there's a, there is a lack of appreciation of A, the longevity and durability of this virus. This is the thing that drives everybody in this thing nuts because it sits on surfaces and it doesn't go away the way normal viruses do. And you can pick them up from the surfaces. It's really, really bad. And the other part of it is that you are, that individuals, and this is why the push for all the testing, that individuals that are otherwise showing no symptoms at all, and they're going to get through the virus completely untouched, except for the fact that they're dropping these particles all the time. And somebody who, for whatever the reason, either their age or their genetic disposition or whatever, can pick up those particles and they're deadly to them. And so I really think that you ought to rethink the, this, this meeting together there because I think it's an unnecessary risk. That's all. I won't say any more. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you, Roy. Uh, thanks, Roy. And, uh, just so you know, uh, you're really distorted coming through. I'm not sure what's doing that. But... Uh, Roy, I get it. Roy, just, just, Roy, Roy uh, I had a couple of points. Uh, Roy, I'm sorry. Because it was a speakerphone. That's why. Anyway, it's all right. R R Roy, just just a, a few. So it's just the three of us in this big room, and um, we're at least ten feet more or more from away from each other. I'm actually sitting here with a mask on. Um, no, I, I, I get like it. Bandana. Yeah. Well, okay. Bandana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bandana. <laughs> well, bandanas aren't good enough. But what about the fact that you're touching the tables? You're you're on the chairs. I mean, it's like you know, it's. If, if you want to set an example. That's a great example, you know, to, to, you, you're not, you're not going to meet in person. And I, I don't think people get it. I just don't think people get it, um, you know. Uh, and anyway, I, I, that's all. Just as a, uh, uh, a town resident, I, I had to contribute here. All right. Thank, thank you, Roy. Okay. <laughs> all right. Next item. Uh, question of alternative housing for first responders exposed to the virus. Tom, what do we have on that? Well, Phil already, uh, already mentioned the, uh, the FEMA. Uh, the federal executive order helping out with our state emergency management. FEMA is uh, arranging for housing for first responders. Right. Uh, one of the main problems is that in order to get tested, they have to go to Shrewsbury. And, you know, we can ask that a Western Mass Center be set up, but we know what the chances of that are likely to be. There's only one in the state right now, and that's Shrewsbury, so um, it's definitely an inconvenience for people, but at least there is a place for them to go if they have any concerns. So um, I just wanted to add that, uh, that NEMA is preparing logistics for quarantine operations.
encourage, you know, somebody from, you know, Natalie or, or you know, or, or somebody you know, about creating a place for people to go. You, you know, I mean, if there's a, 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 a the Hot El Warren or, you know, the, some, the Red Roof or some local hotel, if, you know, would they be willing to house people who need well, to be quarantined? There, there are requirements. If, if a hotel is going to do that, they have to make either an entire wing or the whole hotel into that facility. Um, and th these are the kind of logistics that MEMA is working with, and, and they are working with hotels to try to arrange for that kind of capacity. Uh, but it's not something that you do just for a room or two. Similar, just just for our own town, to speak, I used, you know, with, and I, I always wondered that the the, school, the the teachers' lounge in the grammar school as a very as a kitchen and a, and a large bathroom and plenty of room for a bed that and, and its own locking door that kind of a thing. Um, the, what, what I read about the possible quarantine of your EMS people is that um, the, the 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 protocol calls for you know quarantine upon exposure and. Um, Nine times out of ten, they're never going to be affected physically, whatever. And that when you quarantine them um, away from where they can do work, like it, uh, in a lot of those instances, even though they're being quarantined, it's still safe for them to do work if they're properly protected. Um, and so that would be taking those kinds of people out of the workforce. And I don't know, I don't know what the numbers are and whether the our EMS service can withstand uh, out of like out of town quarantine that's right and, and, and that's absolutely correct and that um it wouldn't it wouldn't cost as much to uh to, to fix up one of those like either the teacher's lounge or even the upstairs here but the teacher's lounge i would think would be a good spot um the quarantine and the school's not being used but um well I, i'm sure that there has to be there has to be you know state regulations followed and all kinds of stuff that is our emergency shelter already uh, yes, yes. Uh, for a quarantine, it would be for one person. Um, and as I recall, there was there was some pushback against using uh, the school at all from our emergency management director, who I think um, would be would be uh, firmly opposed to using the school for that purpose. Saying uh, is how it would it would uh, have to be treated very differently for some period of time afterwards. taking people out of the workforce is very real. As you know, Berkshire Medical Center, it, 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 uh, it put 58 nurses on quarantine. I wonder how many there are who work there. You know, the, the, the loss of, of uh, the medical bench, shall we say, has been recognized for some time, and that's why there are the orders allowing retirees and, and uh, people from other states to be set medicine in Massachusetts or, or, or nursing. So uh, there are very real issues. Um, I don't know that Conway has the capacity to solve them, uh, but obviously we want to stay aware of all of the, the uh, initiatives that are happening around them. And, you know, it, it's, it's probably best for someone to quarantine in their own home if they can. Um, and, you know, that's, that's the best case scenario. The, the, the problem is is when when you have first responders with families who don't want to bring the infection into their house. So they want to stay away. And, uh, you know, we, we don't have a facility in Conway that's, that's really set up for that. And, uh, um, and I told you what the EMD thinks about the school right now. Okay. So let's just, you know, keep our, our uh, finger on the pulse there. All right, next item is uh, Cultural Council Grantees. Giselle, you have something on that? Uh, yes. So I sent um, the. Uh, we've been in touch with the Mass Cultural Council about. Um, they are encouraging local cultural councils like ours to give direct grants to grantees because um, you know it's clearly a hardship for people who programs that are either postponed or canceled. And in general, there's. Our system is to reimburse them once they've done the program, but um, 
the state, I think, is being very compassionate and generous and wanting to just get the money out to grantees and good faith that they will eventually do their programs. And, you know, we're so small that um, we came, we spent a lot of time thinking about all these ways of assessing them and who's done their program and who hasn't and um, do they plan on doing it. But nobody knows what's coming and how long it will be. So we, um, we really think we should just give out the grants in good faith that they're going to eventually do the programming. It might be next year, or it might be an altered version or an online version or something different than what they propose. But in these times, I think um, with the state's blessing, we'd like to do that. And it, it would just, it, um, we just need the blessing of the town and, you know, the understanding that we'll be asking them for these grant agreements and W-9, and then the town would send them checks. What, how, how many how many grantees do we have and how much total are we giving out? Oh gosh, um, I don't have all those numbers in front of me. Michelle, do you yeah, how about an How about an estimate, just an estimate? I'd say, yeah, I'd say like 4,000 yet. It would be a 4,000. Three, three, okay. three, three have come in so far. Three have been, yeah, three have been completed, so. Okay, so we're giving out 4,000 in grants to how many people, how many entities? Uh, okay. Tell me what, you, what do you think, about 15 or something? Yeah, I wish I had organized that, about 15. All right, and it's, and it's your recommendation that we give that out first? It's not only our recommendation, it's the state's recommend, you know, the, the Mass Cultural Council's recommendation as well. Okay. Uh, you know, right. can, can I ask a quick, quick question, clarification? Uh, um, the money we would be giving them is the money that we got from for the grant, right? I mean, it's, this is Correct. not the state has already money. given. It's, you know, yeah, yeah, we're a pass through. We're a pass through. Yeah, yeah. So, right. Good. I just wanted to make it sure. Doesn't cost the town yeah. anything, right? It, it's just right. really an administrative right. um, process that's changing slightly. And, and many of these grantees are probably grantees that we've we've dealt with before. Uh, most of them, I would say. I'm sorry, you just... Uh -huh. I, okay. I missed that. Still, do you have anything on that? Yeah, um, so this is still Ken. I just would like to applaud your desire to help people and all for it. So help whoever you can, however you can. Good, good. Okay. Bob, you have any comments? No, I agree with Phil. Uh, you know, it, uh, I, I, I'll hope they come and do the program, and I suspect they will if it's at all possible. And uh, I'm terrible, but... I'll, yeah, I'll make just, a motion I, that... Sorry, I just I'll, have, I'll make, I opened our document. There's about 25 grantees, and they're all small amounts, like $200, $300 each, something. Uh, all right, I'll make, I'll make a motion that based on the recommendation of the Cultural Council that uh, we follow the state's um, uh, practice of, at, at the current time of giving out money before um, shows and projects are done uh, in order to um, to facilitate uh, this this grant giving, do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Yes. Philip? Aye. Yes. Robert? Aye. aye. And yeah. I will aye. We have it's unanimous. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Sure. Thanks. Um, any other related issues or policies, Philip? Do we have anything else? Um,
I, I think if you're if you're talking about raising people's level of anxiety, um, it's, it's odd that you would not take the kinds of precautions that we will be urging other people to take. All right. Do you want to try? Do you want to try next week's meeting uh, totally remote? Yeah. Do you want to do that and see how it goes? I think it's a good idea. So what is that? Okay? Yeah. Okay. And we have, we have, we'll all call into the conference line number for us. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, there's just, all right, we're going to need, we're going to need, uh, how are we going to sign things? Um, we can, I can have things available at the town office that we can come in. Okay. Your leisure. Okay. Can we do electronic signatures? I mean, we've done that before. Well, we don't have the capability right now to do electronic signatures. Okay, we can work on it though. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll figure something out. Um, and actually, issue temporary power of attorneys to the town administrator to sign a document on our behalf. Uh, I, I wouldn't suggest going so far. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we need to do that. <laughs> the limited power of attorney. Uh, we uh, uh, sign only one document. Yeah. Uh, Our 
different towns may vary very slightly. But some towns maybe would be able to get a slightly higher or a slightly lower price. And all of the towns felt that they would rather we, we all joined together and all had the same price. And the prices all, I think, are going to be so much lower, especially the never sources prices now, which are, what, 12 and a half cents or something, um, right, for yep. their electricity. You know, and the prices that we looked at last week were about 9.2 instead of 12.5. Now, I suspect Eversource's summer prices are going to come down too, but there's a possibility our prices could be below, you know, below 9. And I Ever don't believe Eversource will be close. Yeah, Ever Eversource, uh, Eversource's prices are going to be down in the 9s. Yeah. So, so... So, so basically, that's what I, I wanted to just lay out that that's the plan. That in the it, it, slightly after Eversource comes out with their summer price, all of the boards are going to be asked to make a decision of whether they want to join or not. And hopefully, the prices will be lower than Eversource. And my hope is that Conway will decide to join. Uh, we also will have to make a decision at that time about what kind of what options of higher levels of green energy we want to offer to the people in Conway. You know, there will be basic service, which is like the same level of green that the law requires that Eversource provides. And then a few other options. They may lay out four or five different things we could choose from, and we may not want to offer all four or five of those to the people of Conway, or we could. Uh, you know, 5% more green or 20% more green or, or, you know, and there's class one green, there's offshore wind that, uh, there's, there's, there's national wind that doesn't contribute to New England very much. And so there's different, and so these are the kind of things that, that we will be, we'll, as we need to go through the survey that we took just to read what people's opinions were. I don't think we've gathered up the data, I hope. As soon as I get home, I want to get the surveys and look and see what they said. And then Too bad you didn't take on. it with you. I wish I had. <laughs> I didn't know. So, anyway. All right. Well, that's, that's good. That's good. Um, all right. So, we'll, we'll be waiting for that uh, toward the middle of May. And, and again, what, what Colonial will probably and do then, by that time is they'll work out electronic signing of the contracts. I, I really hope that, that they don't know how to do it yet, but they think they know how to do it, so yes. Um, and I think I did send out the letter that, that we got from Colonial about laying out this, so I hope everybody reads it and we can talk about it um, next week. Right, okay, great. Thank you, Bob. All right, next item under new business we have uh, to consider the new Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Grant Proposal. Thomas? They just keep coming. They just keep coming. Um, this this uh, has a fairly tight timeline, and I know... Janet, you're on, you're on the call, yes. Janet? Yes, I am. Uh, uh, and I know you had some ideas for what this ought to be, and, I, and I'm wondering if you want to talk about that. Sure, yes. We have um, briefly uh, consulted with Beth Gershman, who is uh, Beth is the Mohawk Trail uh, Woodland Partnership, our representative, and this is a, a grant specifically for those who have adopted it. So that's good for that. And then, and then I uh, have some correspondence with uh, Allison Hunter Wright, who for Oh, well, it's me with some uh, creatives and different ideas. Um, it is a pretty tight time frame, like buying around the middle of May. Yeah. maximum amount is twenty thousand dollars. Excuse me. Excuse me. Somebody's making a lot of noise. Uh, yes. Could you please mute? I don't know who it is. Thank you very much. I can't hear. So thank you. Uh, which could be very useful for us. It, 
we, you know, we don't have any of this business, but we're thinking about uh, a trail recommendation, um, expanding that uh, on to the Mohegan Mohawk Trail. You know that? that Can you hear me? No, not really. No. Somebody's making a lot of noise. Is all I can say. It sounds like you're underwater. Maybe. Maybe it's coming on your end, Janet. I don't know. Oh, all right. Well, I picked up the phone. How's this? Is this Janet? No. No. Uh, no. Uh, I can hear you. Like somebody, somebody's doing the dishes or something. I don't know. Well, I'm up to get some Murphy's way down in the kitchen. It's pretty far. What, any better now? Yeah. 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 Okay, good. All right. Wasn't me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, so some uh, uh, for a trail improvement, we have, there's a trail called the Mohegan Mohawk Trail that crosses, starts at the end of Hoosick Road, actually starts right into Deerfield, and it goes, you know, over the river and through the woods and crosses, uh, into crosses over the Deerfield River to Conway Station Road. And there's some land and connections on there that um, uh, the improvement. Actually, there's one place where there's a big gully and it's on private land, but this type of sort of planning grant uh, might help us hone in on what needs to be done and whether we get the landowners, you know, approval and how that's done. Um, the, uh, the focus of this is for the grant is for helping um, uh, economic, helping the forest, basically. And one way to do it is for our tourists, uh, uh, helping our small businesses with recreational-based tourism. So the folks are a little ad hoc group proposes that we focus on some uh, improving some trails and consulting with some small businesses that like we have a couple of summer camps and we have a bicycle uh, business um, and the raft business so we try to look at those and see what improvements they might tie into We don't know if you've gotten more guidance from FERCOG, whether they want to sort of prepare this for us with our input or whether we would try to prepare it ourselves. Um, this this Mohegan Trail what does involve both into Shelburne and starts in Deerfield, so potentially there's the regional angle there. Uh, this is as far as we've gotten, but uh, uh, I think it would, we should try to pursue it. Yeah, I think um, we would uh, first decide whether or not we wanted, you know, to do this sort of project as a town, and then uh, we would reach out to the COG to see if other towns were doing similar things, which would make it easier for them to include in a single grant, and they can apply for lots of money and um, have obviously a great deal of success, uh, a record of success in applying for these. I don't well, know what, how competitive we would be as an individual town, um, but I mean, we, we, we could reach out to Deerfield and Shelburne individually as well, um, but if, if it were to be a regional, if it were to be a regional grant, which makes sense because of a regional trail network, like yeah. the Mohawk Trail, um, excellent example. Um, yeah. Then, then it would make sense to do a regional grant proposal. Well, right. Uh, so, I mean, there, we have we have ideas for sort of non-regional. I did not read in this that there was you're going to get more points for being having more than one town, but maybe we just assume that's the case. Anyway, I, I guess my suggestion now is that the 
select board, you know, endorse this as a concept and see if, if uh, us interested folks can maybe work with Tom and work to develop and flesh it out a little bit more. Yeah, and it, and it, it does give 10 points for a regional plan. Okay, okay. So, uh, Jen, 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 this is this is Phil Kanner. So, I, I had a couple of questions about where where you and Beth and uh, the committee were sort of going with your thoughts because, um, uh, and I come from the perspective that the current grant award that was just issued, the twenty thousand dollars that that supposedly the town of Conway got, but yes. um, it was, but but when I when I looked and I saw that it was six thousand to one forester, six thousand to another forester, and then the balance to FERCOG. I think, well, um, no, that, that, that's not that, 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 that's not actually it. I did come forward and made the results of the bid, and there, uh, it's kind of complicated, but it's, it's not that complicated. It's for Conway and Rowe, and, and there were there were two components for each. There's there's the actual forestry component, um, and an outreach component, uh, and the biggest this look good to me, competitive and good professional. But one thing I point out on this, this is for just the, our town board, the, the the one that we're just that we just got, right? For the town, only for the town board, and this current grant uh, applies does not specify. Uh, a town or, or and they did not we, apparently this can be applied to private land some of it so so we have um, plenty of options outside and you know connecting with uh, so I, I, I guess where I was going down is that there was that first possi uh, of all the things that the grant can do there was that first um, there was that first option about the carbon in yes. the carbon pricing initiative, and, yes. and so that in, that in particular is something that that I was interested in, just because I thought it aligned with the values of the town, as have been as has been repeatedly expressed at town meetings through like annual resolutions. They're saying yes. be carbon neutral, be blah blah blah, blah. and so yes. um, okay. this, so uh, uh, of, of, of all the, of all the ways to sort of put uh, meaning, put flesh and blood into those resolutions, I thought that this kind of that, that that this program, this par partnership, was, was really one of the best opportunities to do that. Um, so, so, and, and I, I briefly spoke to Beth about something about this, I think, but I didn't really know where where, where the partnership is, where you all were, were with that idea, and because I noticed it's, you, you haven't really talked about that, but yeah, um, yeah, and I would love to address it. I mean, my first reaction. Of Phil was, I think, just like yours, was excited about, yes, let's get carbon correct. Okay. Um, and here's what Allison uh, Wright, and you all know her, right? She's a forester. Uh, she's a service, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, here, here's her, her message. She says, first, the carbon market is complicated and expensive, but feasible for only large landowners. Therefore, it will only benefit a few people. These types of programs are being explored on private land in Vermont. It would be good to let Vermont cash out all the difficulties for private land with entering the market. Within the next year, DCR should have a carbon market program to offer for municipalities. And uh, Allison says she's currently working with Mass Audubon to establish this program. Um, so we just we're, we're just kind of not at that stage yet, and it. So, so I guess my my next my next question is that is it, aren't there data sets that we don't currently have that are necessary to get to that next stage? Yes, that, that, that is. Uh, yes. Like like like. A, Carbon forestry mapping, this so that you can look at what parts of the forest are the richest in carbon deposits and which parts of the forest would be best to be let, et cetera, et cetera. Do you know what, yeah, do you well, know what I'm talking about? Well, yes, I do. I mean, I do know that it's complicated, and I think we are not in any position, and I don't think this would do it yet either, that we need to wait for 
but to see how these other studies go, to see what they come up with with Mass Audubon, and then uh, and then learn from from there and see you know how much of what kind and see what the next step. I mean, definitely, I absolutely agree with you. A long term goal, but it's not ready yet. You know, so, Janet, you I have a question. This is Bob. But my question is really more going to Phil too. That when I look at the second grant, the one that we're talking about applying for, I don't see any of that fitting into the second one. Whereas the first grant, the one that, that for, for our account for, it feels like we could put some of that kind of stuff in in the the forestry plan that we write. You know, that, that we would be interested in our town participating in the. DCR's forestry programs, when, carbon programs, when they when they when yes. they get finalized. Yes, absolutely. But, but, yes, we can put that in. Absolutely. But for the, the second grant, you know, the grant says it's for two things. One is making the forest more profitable or encouraging recreation. And I'm thrilled that you have ideas for the second part for encouraging recreation. Yes. Good. Yes. Um, it, it does mention on, on the bottom of page three that, that one possible thing we could do is completion of studies or inventories required to prepare a forest carbon credit market project. Um, but, you know, based on what Allison Wright says, and she's extremely well informed, if she thinks it's better to wait a year and wait for the DCR program to come out, then, then I think that's great too. Uh, what I will is that, that uh, I mentioned before there's an extremely tight timeline on this. We actually need to make a decision on going forward at the next meeting. Uh, so I will encourage uh, Janet, you, and uh, Bob, and Phil, and whoever else wants to uh, to pitch some ideas. I would suggest everybody get your, get your best ideas to Janet. And Janet, if you can work with, um, I don't know if it's Peggy or Kimberly who's handling this at the call. Peggy. Yeah, Peggy. Yeah, yeah. Peggy. Um, it, uh, if you can work with Peggy, then then maybe we can have something sufficiently uh, substantial to uh, to vote on next week. Okay. Well, in, in just in ter all, all right. In terms of idea, I don't know that how how much we'll uh, have for next week, but we will certainly try. Um, and, and and really, all, all we need is, is a vote to move forward with the grant, um, but it, it would help a vote to move forward if we had some idea of where it was heading. So you've already said recreation and trails and and some improvements to the uh, Mohegan Mohawk Trail. So so that, yeah. that that's actually a, a strong beginning, but if we can flesh that out a little bit more specifically, okay. then I think it'll be um, a lot easier to... to to vote for it and say, okay, uh, work on the details uh, um, as okay. you go going. And, and, and do, you guys like, and do you like the idea of um, uh, exploring with the recreation-based businesses that we have here, what might help them? Sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. You mean like signage, directing people? Yeah, well, yeah, and also, you know, expanded trails or what uh, Allison also talked about, there are a lot of people who really do come in, you know, from out of town, could come in and they like these really long, arduous woods trails, you know, I don't know if they're runners or they're just hikers, but mm -hmm. that has some potential for, I don't know what, Airbnbs or something. Airbnb, come in, yeah. Coming to oh. Baker's store for, you know, nourishment or the inn for nourishment, so... Uh, yeah, providing some maps would be great. Maps yes. with some promotional, uh, some promotional material in them, cleverly disguised. And uh, right. right, right. I said, uh, you know, I said one of my standing, uh, standing concerns is about promoting businesses. You know, what if we get these tourists into town. Where do they go to the bath? So we could just uh, have a porta potty. Down, down the road. All right. 80 bucks a month. 80 bucks a month? Yeah. 
Yeah. No. Parsons Cans, Greenfield. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so, so we want to hold off until next week on this. Is that is that the consensus here? Okay. And yeah. Robert? Yep. Okay, so, so we're going to wait to vote on this until next week uh, to see if we have any more information to, to, uh, to move forward. All right? Okay. Great. All right. Great. Thank, okay. thank, thank you, Janet. Thank you. All righty. Okay. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye, Janet. Okay. Tom, do you have anything uh, not anticipated? Uh, All right, you have your update? Yes. Thank you. Uh, in committee news, I'm very pleased to report that the newsletter committee has done its job splendidly, and the newsletter should go in the mail tomorrow. People should get them on April 1st. Do they have a name? Uh, Conway Currents. Oh, great. Conway Currents. Okay. Evoking the South River, I believe. Yes. Right. The current that goes and, through town. And current events. It's a very clever name, thought up by a very clever staff person in my office. Okay. Uh, uh, and other news, it seems a number of people did not read my memo to committee chairs and others regarding conference lines and picking up mail. So Lisa sent it again today with an emphasis on uh, communicating the contents to the members of their committee. Uh, the Board of Health is managing state Department of Public Health and federal CDC information on their web page. And the town is developing a page for more general information along with a link to the BOH page. I mentioned that earlier. Um, but that's our, we're, we're trying to get all the information in one place rather than have multiple posts taking up space. Uh, in department, Google a contract signed by the accountant, and I thank the town council for his signature as well. He has already approved the template. Uh, but the the, con the uh, template that I use requires the uh, town council signature on contract for construction. The governor's order regarding construction exempts public infrastructure, so I assume it can go ahead if the contractor is willing. You can always extend the time period if there's a understandable delay. Uh, this would, in fact, be a good time as no one else is using the building except the administrative assessor in uh, some of these things. Was Malcolm Course pleased with, uh, with the signing of the contract and uh, officially getting it underway? I can't speak to Malcolm. Yeah, actually, except they should be able to 
sell mixies and shots door sets as well, but um, that would make the people complicated. I think. Uh, they should be able to sell what? Mixies, mixies. Uh, uh, I think we should cocktails. be allowed cocktails. Uh, originally, the original bill let let alcohol spirits be sold in closed containers, but for some reason they they pulled back to just beer and wine. Yeah, I want to bring in a closed container and get get draft beer to go. <laughs> so it's closed when they give it back to you. That's not bad. I think that's good. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have a, a, just a few more items that I added after I uh, printed that out. Um, I sent a memo out which I copied the select board on to uh, town staff about scheduling. Um, this is particularly because it's difficult to maintain the proper distance in the office as, as we have it. It's the office we have, not the office we want. So um, we're uh, staggering our schedules uh, appropriately. And I mentioned that I resent the memo to committees. I already mentioned that. And um, I think oh yeah, I attached to the uh, report there a couple of things. One of them is a handout Board of Health has on their page um, that I thought you just ought to be aware of. And, and please, you know, check in on the pages. Send items you think we might want to post. We're about ready to uh, have the town page go live. Um, not quite yet, but the board health page is up and running and being, being uh, updated regularly. And then I also just attached a graph that I did. The, the Department of Public Health comes out every afternoon about 4 o'clock with new numbers, so I've just been adding them on to a sheet, um, putting them on as I go along. It's pretty easy to do, but it's a record just so that we have uh, And of course, there's all kinds of of uh, caveats about it. And as still noted, you know, it's it's only the confirm, confirmed and presumptive cases that have been reported to the Mass Department of Public Health. Uh, so it, it does not include people who might be walking around um, unknowingly contagious. And people who get sick and they don't think it's this disease, but it actually was, it doesn't include those people. So. It's limited data, but it's the only data we have, so I thought I would share what the state is publishing with you in a, in a chart form, which I think makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. In, interestingly enough, with the, uh, the department's data, the Department of Health's data, um, it maxed out on the 25th, the increase maxed out on the 25th and is starting to decline each day. So reported cases are declining each day as testing is going up. So that's kind of a good sign. Hopefully that continues. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Uh, concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns, Robert? Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, only so you guys stay safe. Uh, we, will, we will try. Bill, if you have anything? Yeah, um, just it's important that people patronize our local businesses um, that that uh, uh, just reports a big drop off in sales in the past week and that um, people need to know that Helen Baker is making really good money bills and that you should go there and pick them up. Um, that there's fresh hot pizza every single day at the inn, at the Conway Inn. People should order it and pick it up. Yep. Um, that that uh, if, if we don't keep patronizing these establishments, they're not going to be here when we need them, when we want them to be. Um, so that and uh, um, yeah. All right. So next week um, we're going to do our meeting uh, completely remotely uh, and see how that works out. Uh, hopefully we can do that um, efficiently and uh, the way we need to. Any other business to come before the board? Uh, okay, with that I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Second, Philip, Robert. Aye. Aye. All right, we're done. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank